and minorities are still underrepresented in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math, commonly, of course, referred to as STEM. As part of our series, Stories for Change, our ABC 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena found out how a local nonprofit called San Diego Squared is working to change that. Increasing diversity in science, technology, engineering, and math-driven companies is the mission of San Diego Squared. And we do that through partnerships first, programs, and financial support for high school, college students, and educators. H. Puentes is the co-founder and board member executive director of SD2. He says what sets them apart is the human connections they make possible, linking students with industry mentors. That looks like them, that shares li that lived experience, uh, and really can be uh, somebody that they can connect to in a real human way. The Fellows Program is a perfect example of that. Local high school students get unique access to real businesses and staff. Week one, they might visit Illumina to understand about medical devices and medical technology. The next week, they might go to Neurocrine Biosciences to understand about how biotech uh, works. It's a hands-on learning experience that Puentes says has already proven successful, giving students a better understanding of what they might want to pursue and someone to help them along the way. He says increasing diversity in STEM not only makes companies more reflective of the communities they serve, studies show diverse businesses perform better. If you want to see your business succeed, if you want to see your business grow, I think you, you, you want to care about diversity and inclusion. San Diego Squared is accepting applications from students and mentors. You can go to their website, sd2.org, for more information. Well, despite progress on the drought, the looming threat of wildfires in San Diego continues. We remain at risk of extreme drought conditions. You'll hear from Cal Fire after the break. And coming up in our next half hour, the newest information on the local COVID picture as some parts of Southern California report a record number of cases this weekend. You're watching ABC 10 News on this Sunday morning. Right now on ABC 10 News this morning, extreme weather on the East Coast forces the cancellation of thousands of flights. The icy conditions as millions of Americans are under an extreme weather advisory. Runners are getting to enjoy a beautiful sunrise right now in Carlsbad. The city's annual marathon just started minutes ago. Look at that. So pretty. We'll talk about how the city is scaling back this year's race to keep those runners safe. Ukraine saying it's ready for anything as reports emerge that Russia is preparing to launch an attack. We'll have the latest as those tensions remain high. ABC 10 News This Morning starts right now. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. I feel like I should stretch or do something just to feel <laughs> some solidarity with the runners who were out there this morning. You do that. Yeah, I will watch you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're here with us. Good luck to everybody who is out there running, whether it's a 5K, a half, a full marathon. It's more than I'm going to do today. I know. I've always said that a half marathon is on my bucket list. It's not still today. on my list. Yeah, not today. <laughs> not today for sure. Good morning. I'm Melissa Masiha. As we take a look here over La Jolla right now, we're starting to see that sunlight in the 630 half hour. Good morning. We're at 58 degrees here. The winds are calm over in downtown. A gorgeous sunrise as well. A few degrees warmer, mid 50s as we start off our Sunday morning. By this afternoon along our coastline, we'll be under partly cloudy skies. We'll be in the upper 60s in many areas in our inland valley is going to be warming up to near the mid 70s in some spots. Now we'll take a closer look at your day to day changes coming up in our super seven day forecast. All right, sounds good, Melissa. Thank you. New shocking numbers are being reported in LA County as public health officials there reported 66 COVID deaths and nearly 42,000 new cases yesterday. The LA Times reporting this is the highest highest daily death count in more than nine months. The number of hospitalized COVID patients also increased to more than 4,300. The county does expect more deaths in the coming weeks. Now here in San Diego County, the latest report shows 9,800 new cases, nearly 9,900 on 40,000 tests, which works out to a test positivity rate of 24.6%. There were also 69 new hospitalizations and five deaths. Airlines have canceled 2,000 flights for today as a powerful winter storm is set to hit the East Coast. Almost 90% of the flights out of Charlotte Douglas International Airport in North Carolina are canceled. The international airports in Raleigh and Atlanta also facing significant cancellations. 
The National Weather Service showing nearly 74 million people are under winter weather alerts. This huge storm system is approaching the eastern U.S. from the Midwest, and it's expected to form crippling ice in parts of Georgia, Virginia, and the Carolinas. The governors in those states have declared emergencies. Some high schoolers in Colorado are taking COVID restrictions into their own hands. This really sucks and we do not want to catch COVID and we do not want to risk our lives just to get a decent education. Students say they're planning on walking out of Thomas Jefferson High School if their district does not improve the coronavirus prevention measures. An online petition has garnered more than 500 signatures calling for N95 or KN95 masks for students, better air filtration systems and COVID testing twice a week. We can see there's still tons of kids getting sick, still tons of outbreaks, and it's it's we need things to change. The school does require masks and has a vaccine requirement for both teachers and students. However, the district is reporting at least 58 schools have five or more cases, meeting the Colorado Department of Public Health's definition of an outbreak. Now to a Team 10 consumer alert. Starting this weekend, insurance companies are now required to cover the cost of up to eight at-home COVID tests per month. You'll also be able to order free tests under a new government-run website starting on the 19th. But these tests have been in high demand over the past several weeks. With the low supply, state and local officials recently issued a new warning about price gouging. While these tests have been given to local students as they return from winter break, they're not easy to find on store shelves. The lack of tests prompting state and local officials to issue a stern warning, don't illegally inflate prices. We see the best of humanity during these kinds of times, but we also see the worst. We've seen more fraud and scams than ever before. District Attorney Summer Stephan told me when it comes to at-home tests, there's a new trend. What we are seeing is what appears to be people reselling their uh, kit that potentially they got for free online for a much higher price. And that could be illegal. A new executive order from the governor prohibits businesses from selling the test for more than 10 percent higher the price they charged in early December. The DA co-sponsored legislation last year to make sure resellers online also don't price gouge. If you're not an established company, but just somebody that for the first time is online selling, then uh, the rules are a little bit different. You have to charge more than 50% than what would be a normal price in order to be in violation of the law. One viewer reported a Santee pharmacy selling a single COVID test for nearly $40 before tax. The same test sells for roughly $10 at other major pharmacies. When I called, the woman who answered said all the prices have been raised. The DA's office and local Better Business Bureau encourage anyone to report possible price gouging, even if they're not sure. When there is scarcity and there is high demand um, with low products and services, a lot of times scammers take advantage of that. And so in this case, COVID-19 is no exception. A violation of the executive order is a misdemeanor. You could receive a fine or up to six months behind bars. To report price gouging during this pandemic, you can call the DA's consumer hotline. It's right there on the bottom of your screen. That number 619-531-3507. Ukraine government forces are preparing for anything as tensions rise on the country's border with Russia. Video released by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry's Joint Forces Operation shows tanks and armored vehicles conducting military drills there. Last week, American officials accused Russia of looking to conduct a false flag operation to justify an invasion of the country. There are accusations that Moscow has denied. The Biden administration has warned Russia that an invasion would not be tolerated. The cyber criminals responsible for the colonial pipeline ransomware attack have been arrested in Russia. A senior Biden administration official told reporters that Russia's FSB intelligence agency detained a number of hackers and that they seized millions in assets. The group called Revel is also believed to have been behind major ransomware attacks on a top U.S. meat supplier and software provider. The attack on the colonial pipeline, though, led to widespread gas shortages uh, at stations all along the East Coast last spring. The U.S. and Russia do not have an extradition treaty. Russia hasn't said how these suspects will be prosecuted. 
Two people have died after a helicopter crash in Louisiana in the marshland. This happened Friday. A caller reported seeing the helicopter go down in the water. Search crews spent hours circling the area. They spotted the deep wreckage or the wreckage deep in the mud. Authorities say the helicopter nosedived before crashing. Most of it was submerged. I just ask uh, all of us to, to join in prayer for the family members uh, of the pilot and the crew. Uh, it's going to be a tough night for them uh, as they realize the loss of a loved one. Uh, it's never easy to make those calls uh, and our prayers are with the family as, as they, they start the grieving process. Officials are working to notify the families of the two passengers before they release the names of the victims. A tentative sentencing day for convicted sex trafficker Ghislaine Maxwell is now set for June 28th. Maxwell faces 65 years in prison after being convicted of five counts in December, including sex trafficking a minor. Prosecutors argued Maxwell and the late Jeffrey Epstein conspired to set up a scheme to lure young girls into sexual relationships with Epstein. Defense attorneys want to delay the sentencing in hopes that the court will overturn Maxwell's conviction and grant her a new trial. The ruling on that new trial motion has yet to be decided. Police arrested a man after they say he pushed a woman to her death in front of an oncoming subway train yesterday. I'm afraid to stay uh, on the corner because uh, I know that sometimes some crazy people can push somebody. Police say 61-year-old Simon Marshall pushed 40-year-old Michelle Go onto the tracks. Marshall is believed to be homeless. The New York mayor and governor announced a plan last week to increase police patrols in subways. This was a senseless, absolutely senseless act of violence. Marshall has been charged with murder. A warning from Cal Fire that even with recent rain, wildfire risks remain high in our county. Fires are just pushing harder and stronger than they ever have in the past. The last two years have been some of the worst for wildfires in the state, even though the newest drought monitor numbers show that we're no longer in extreme drought conditions. San Diego, he says, is still at risk. And even with all the rain we've gotten this year, 99% uh, of the state is still in some level of drought, including San Diego County down here. We're still in a moderate drought. And we know how quickly we can end up right back there. Captain Shute says climate change causes winds to pick up faster than before and to accelerate wildfires. He says other factors too. People aren't maintaining their vehicles or their yards. That can contribute to brush fires. Cal Fire encourages everyone to create an evacuation plan now in case a fire does start near your area. Well, the city of Carlsbad is moving forward. Their annual marathon event is happening right now. They're literally moving forward. <laughs> At least hopefully they're all making progress. It's scaled back though. The full marathon has just a thousand people participating and the half marathon is limited to 4,500 participants who are just about to start things off. You can see them at the start line right now. These are the half marathoners. The Full 26 milers are already underway, but they're up near the shops at Carlsbad and their reward is that gorgeous sunrise this morning. Now the ABC 10 News Pinpoint Weather Super 7 Day Forecast. And the medal at the end and, you know, the sense of accomplishment. Oh, and yeah. All sorts of other things. But. Yeah, good luck to all of those runners who are out there. Hey, they're treated to skies like this. This wow. is beautiful. This is from Chula Vista. So, yeah, I'm enjoying all of our sunrise shots as we get started with another day. I am tracking our rain totals because we did get some rain, really not impressive at all, but it is the first measurable rain this year. And we do have a chance to get some more, a little more, but hey, Okay, we will take it. Our seven day forecast for today along our coastline. We are going to be under partly cloudy skies. We'll be in the upper 60s uh, to low 70s for the most part. So once we get into the afternoon, as we look at our marine layer future cast, we should get some clearing. So better than what we saw 24 hours ago. Of course, along our coastline, definitely socked in by that marine layer. Looking ahead to tomorrow for the holiday, we're going to be dropping down into the mid 60s in most areas. We do have that chance of rain. So most of Monday Monday during the day should be dry. It's once we get into those evening and the overnight hours leading up to early Tuesday morning that we do have another chance of light rain measurable, but overall it should be light. We're going to stay in the 60s here as we get toward the middle of the week. And then once we get into Thursday and Friday along the coast into Saturday, we are going to be in the low 70s with the overnights for the next several nights in the low 50s. Moving on over to our inland valleys. So for your Sunday, we are going to be in the 70s warmer than what we saw yesterday. We were dealing with those Santa Ana's yesterday 
Today, the winds will be mostly onshore, but overall, they are going to be calm. Now, for those who do have the holiday for tomorrow, the Martin Luther King, hopefully you enjoy the day off. Our temperatures will be in the upper 60s come Monday, so a little bit cooler than what we are seeing here today. We are going to be partly cloudy. The winds will remain calm, and those overnight hours, again, the light rain expected late Monday. Continuing on into the week, we're going to stay in the 60s by Thursday, another warm day where we're we're going to be near the mid 70s. The morning hours will be cool and then once we get into the lunch hour will be a lot more comfortable, a little warmer than where we should be for this time of year. In our mountain communities for your Sunday to start off a new week, we will be in the upper 50s. We're going to be in the mid 50s by Monday with the overnights into the 40s. Hanging out in the deserts, we will be in the upper 70s here for the next couple of days. More sunshine heading into the work week and we're going to stay in the 70s range here as to actually as we continue on with the rest of the week. Mary. That feels like the weather we pay for in <laughs> January. All right, Melissa, thank you. Wildcard weekend in the NFL started with a couple of big games. The result is a historic playoff drought finally ended. Not this game, this one, a contender that made a big statement. A man in Maryland recently received a heart transplant using the modified heart of a pig. Researchers at UC San Diego say this could have a major impact for thousands of people on waiting lists for vital organs. At 641, you're watching ABC 10 News this morning. Skycam Views, sponsored by Carlsbad Solar. Can you feel the anticipation? Yeah, they're all ready to go. Look at them, ready to charge. These are the 5K participants. Good luck to all of you. This is the Carlsbad Marathon up near the shops at Carlsbad. Of what they're one minute away from their start time. Ooh, a little nerves. Although this is the this is the distance that I think you and I could. Oh yeah, could do some damage here, Mom. We could 5K, get out there. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to them and uh, enjoy a gorgeous morning for it. The Supreme Court will hear the case of a high school football coach banned from taking a knee to pray on the field after games. Coach Joe Kennedy says the district violated his rights when they banned him from praying at midfield immediately after games. He was removed from his job. The district says it never moved to prevent him from holding a silent private prayer. Its concern was his request to do so more publicly. Kennedy has lost his case in district court as well as the Ninth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals. Those rulings determined Kennedy's prayer equated to governmental speech not protected by the First Amendment. This is a sad update. The Mayfield, Kentucky candle factory de destroyed by last month's tornado. It will not be rebuilt in a letter. The company says it just isn't feasible to continue operations there. Some surviving workers have filed a class action suit against Mayfield Consumer Products.